Hey, how's it going? If you clicked on this video expecting to see a review of the Deep Cool Gamer Storm Captain 240EX all-in-one liquid CPU cooler, then that is awesome because that's what this video is all about. Welcome to Maraxo's Reviews and How-Tos. My name is Brian. Now, let's get this video started. For the past several years, all-in-one liquid CPU coolers have been steadily gaining in popularity. What I believe people like the most about them is their near-silent operation and, of course, the superior cooling power of water. Personally, I've been on the fence for some time now about picking one up for my rig here, uh, in part due to my reservation about putting liquid inside of an expensive assortment of electronic components and also because I really just haven't seen any that were really all that visually interesting to me. That is until I saw this guy right here. So the Captain 240EX is the successor to the Captain 240, which I first saw in action when I was helping my cousin with his recent PC build. It's part of the GamerStorm line from Deep Cool, and as its name suggests, it has a 240 millimeter long radiator with a water block slash pump that's rated at 120,000 hours. It's available in two different color schemes. I, of course, picked up the black and red version, and there is also a white and black version. Now, for me, I think the thing that I'm most curious to see is how this cooler that I recently purchased for 90 US dollars performs versus my Cooler Master VA GTS that I also paid 90 US dollars for back when I built my current rig here in June of 2015. So let's uh, get this thing out of the box, see what all we've got in here, uh, run some tests, or get it installed and run some tests, and then see if there's uh, any major differences in temperature between the Captain 240EX and the similarly priced Cooler Master V8 GTS. Now, those of you watching this video right now, I assume have seen the Captain 240EX somewhere and are interested in buying one for yourself. And you're watching this video now to research the cooler a little bit more and see if it is indeed worth your hard-earned money. I also assume you have done your homework and have already found out this cooler is indeed compatible with your CPU socket. But if you're not sure whether your CPU socket is compatible, then keep your ears peeled because I'm about to read off the list and I want to make this quick, so here we go. On the Intel side, it supports the LGA 2011 socket, the LGA 2011 V3, LGA 1366, 1150, 1151, 1155, and 1156 sockets. As for the AMD side of the coin, it supports the FM2, FM2+, FM1, AM3, AM3+, AM2, and AM2+, sockets. Installing the Captain 240EX is actually pretty easy, thanks to the very easy to follow, fully, illustra fully illustrated instructions. Uh, the thing I had the most trouble with was securing the fans to the radiator, uh, because apparently the screw holes don't come pre-tapped, so I had to push pretty hard to get the screws to thread in. Um, but other than that, the only thing I feel like I should mention for those of you looking to buy the Captain 240EX is that when hooking up your radiator fans, um, make sure that you plug one of the fans onto the, the white plug of the included fan hub. Uh, initially, I did not do this, and my computer wouldn't allow me to boot into Windows because it didn't think that any CPU fans were actually connected. So yeah, as long as you hook up one of your uh, fans to the little white connector, you'll be all good. With the Captain installed, it is now time for the moment of truth. I should probably mention that I installed this on my i740-790K that I've set to stock speeds, which is a base clock of 4 GHz and a turbo of 4.4. To get what I hope to be the most fair comparison, I set a custom fan curve on both the V8 GTS and the Captain 240EX so that the fans will run within the same RPM range at various temperature thresholds as the tests are being conducted. I also use the same Noctua NTH1 thermal paste with both coolers. As for my tests, I decided to do four different comparisons, the first of which is, of course, to compare my V8 GTS and the Captain 240 at idle. 
As this screen capture of hardware monitor attests, the Cooler Master V8 GTS hit a maximum of 49 degrees Celsius, which I believe was recorded right as hardware monitor was opening, uh, because once it was open and monitoring temperatures, it just sat right in the low 30s. Um, now for the Captain 240. Uh, at idle, it performed right about the same, actually. The max temperature when starting hardware monitor was noticeably higher, jumping into the mid to upper 50s. Uh, however, our actual idle temps uh, quickly settled into the same range as the V8 GTS in the low 30s. The second test was, of course, to put some load onto the CPU, so I loaded up good old Prime 95 and ran a 20 minute long stress test. The Cooler Master V8 GTS hit 85C on the hottest core during the course of the test, with the Captain 240EX performing slightly better, hitting a maximum temperature of 82C on the hottest core. Now we could just stop right there. We've got temperatures at both idle and at full load, but Prime95 is a synthetic stress test which is designed to stress your CPU much more than most any other application is going to. So before we call this one, I think we should take a look and see uh, what we can expect in more realistic workloads. So in test number three, I figured I'd do what the vast majority of you watching this video right now will most likely be doing on your computers, and I played some games. In Titanfall 2, the V8 GTS uh, fared quite well, hitting a maximum of 68C on the hottest core. In Doom, it also topped out at 68C and then 67C in StarCraft 2. Moving over to the star of our show, the Captain 240EX, in Titanfall 2 we actually hit 69C on the hottest core, so actually one degree hotter than the V8 GTS. Uh, in Doom, I hit 70C, once again one degree hotter than the V8. Uh, but I did see a slight 3 degree temperature decrease in StarCraft 2 with the hottest core reaching 64C. For my final comparison, I wanted to test some software that I frequently use for my day job. I work for a construction company and one of my duties is to design the kitchens for the homes that we build and then to order the cabinets. To do this I use a program called 2020 Design which does photorealistic renderings of the kitchens so our clients can see what their new kitchen and stuff is going to look like uh, before we actually go and order everything. The rendering process relies very heavily on the CPU, so once again I ran a test to compare temperatures between the two coolers while rendering out a kitchen design. This test actually produced the second highest CPU temperatures of all the tests that I ran, with the Cooler Master V8 GTS topping out at 80C on the hottest core. And once again I was kind of surprised to see that the Captain 240EX actually came in 2 degrees hotter reaching 82C on the hottest core. Okay, so now's the time for that part of the video where I give my final thoughts about the Captain 240EX, and I must say that I'm a little surprised by the results that I got. Uh, with it being a liquid cooler, I was fully expecting the Captain 240EX to edge out the V8 GTS in all of my tests, but it turned out they performed quite similarly, and the V8 even performed a little better in some instances. On the one hand, I was disappointed with the Captain's performance, it being a liquid CPU cooler and all, uh, but after thinking about it for a while and taking into consideration that they're both $90 coolers, it made me realize just how good of an air cooler the V8 really is, with it performing on par with an all-in-one liquid cooler. Uh, even though the Captain hasn't made much of a difference when it comes to cooling my CPU, Overall, it operates more quietly than the V8 GTS does, and with my tower sitting a mere two feet away from my head, that reduction in noise is quite welcome. Uh, another thing I really like about the Captain 240EX is its aesthetics. From the design of the block with its tubing that allows you to see the liquid flowing through it, and the LED lighting to the beautiful braided sleeving on the radiator hoses, in my opinion, it's one of the coolest looking all-in-one liquid CPU coolers on the market today. And those of you watching this video right now, I imagine share my same opinion that a CPU cooler's looks are equally as important as its cooling performance. And that, my friends, brings us to the close of the video. 
I hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative and all of that jazz. Uh, before you head out, uh, please click the thumbs up button if you like the video, and uh, also consider subscribing to my channel if you are not already. If you have a question for me or you just want to say hi, there's the comment section down below here where you can leave those and I'll do my best to answer your questions as well as return your salutations. Uh, and as I sign off, I just want to say thank you for hanging out and watching today. I'm looking forward to doing it again next time.